This is KHQA Overtime with Chris Dewar. Brought to you by Con Communications. This is KHQA. It's your news now. And this is Saturday, December the 21st, and you have entered this cool Yule edition of Overtime. Holiday wishes and the best of the Christmas season to you and yours. That is, unless, of course, you are one of those accursed weather people who keep ruining our sports weekends with your precipitation indexes and European models and such. In that case, all I'm wishing for you is the gastric equivalent of El Nino this season. Too harsh? I think not. Welcome to another perfectly good sports schedule gone off the rails. And once again, your hardworking KQA sports department was in scramble and salvage mode. And we have many goodies for you, including a profile of the Tri-State's fastest rising high school boys basketball power, a Seeds of Greatness feature for you on the Unity Lady Mustangs Youth Brigade, and a pair of Tri-State alums crowned national champions today. But let us start with the little on-court basketball action that we do have. It is the QU Subway Holiday Classic 14th year tonight, and it was an interesting showing against Central State tonight for the Hawks. A slow showing to start with as Kirby Wright hits the bucket here for Central State. It's a 6-2 lead. Finally, the de-icing begins for the Hawks. It starts with this guy, Scotty Bruckford, who had himself a heck of a game. More on him in just a second as he kind of got things kindled up. This would be Jamil Jones with a nice take and the offense started finding some rhythm. It was a little tough right here. Evan McGaffey finding some tough sledding in the low blocks kicks it out to Herman Senor who knocks that down. That young man played some good ball tonight off the bench. More from Bruxfort. Nice fade away a la Kobe right there and all of a sudden the Hawks had a two point lead. More to come in this one as the Hawks find their rhythm. It's Dalton Hoover, the Pittsfield product in the inside. Then the other local big, Evan McGaffey from the outside, knocking down the long jumper. And all of a sudden, the Hawks were catching fire. They kept building momentum, a crescendo to the half, if you will. Scotty Bruxford, the strong take there for two more of his 17 points of the night. Then, in the waning, oh, what, four minutes of the first half, the Hawks really hit the accelerator right here. Great spinorama move right there by Josh Shabon, who knocks that in, gets the bucket to fall. Then more from Bruxford. Here's Herman Senor to Bruxford for the dunk you very much at that point. Hawks up 10 at that point. They're not done. Scott Hahn kicking it around. Ball going to go to everybody and then eventually touch Evan McGaffey's hands on the pretty spin move. It's a 12-point lead. The Hawks offense a fire all of a sudden as they would build a 17-point lead at the half. Scotty Hahn with a nice take right here. And again, it's Scotty Bruxford with a beautiful maneuver right here. Everything this kid shot was falling. He had a team high 17, a 16-point lead for the Hawks at half. They have to kind of weather the storm late, but they do indeed get the victory tonight. Final count was 77 to 71. Evan McGaffey with 14 points in that one. Up next would be Hillside, or Hillsdale, I should say, but Truman State trying to take things on. That look on Matt Woodley's face kind of acknowledges you how ugly it was early for his team as Brandon Pritzel hits the bucket. It's 17-4, to Hillsdale at that point. The de-icing process was slow one for the Bulldogs, but Cole Myers kickstarts the thing with a three there. You know, even when the uh, Bulldogs would score, it was kind of an ugly process here. Seth Jackson would be blocked. Cole Myers with the tap away. Yeah, this ain't pretty, but it was kind of effective late in the half as uh, Mr. Cole Myers gets Mr. Jackson with the assist, if you will. Uh, you know what? Answers at the other end, though, by Hillsdale in this one. Tim Delzek, Del, 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 Delzelski, excuse me, right there, trying to keep the dogs at bay. Still, the dogs would keep coming at the end of the first half. Mike Carlson with a great block to ratchet up the defense. Then Reed Mells knocking down jumpers from the outside. Mike Carlson, the only Bulldog in double figures with 20 on the night, gets the great take there. Then Mells with a three to cut the lead at half to just six. Unfortunately for Truman State, they got no closer in this one as they end up losing to Hillsdale 66 to 49. So Hillsdale and Quincy University will play tomorrow at 515 in a true championship game in the QU Subway Holiday Classic. Elsewhere on the college docket tonight, Another tough loss for the Leathernecks as they lose to the Gauchos of UC Santa Barbara, 61 to 55. The Necks now fall to five and seven on the season. Much bigger win today for Illinois College. Brandon Berry leading the way in this one with 18 points. That's a quality win tonight for the Blue Boys and the Quincy University women 
fall for the first time this season. They lose in the championship game of the Terrace Hotel Classic. This is a team that has shot a phenomenal percentage, but the Lady Hawks today just couldn't get the shots to fall. Anna Weedman leading the way in the loss against Tampa State. 70 to 65 was your final in that ball game. Well, as I mentioned, Mother Nature has done her level best to wipe out the entire high school basketball schedule on this very icy Saturday, making this as good a time as any to take inventory of the early season hoops happenings. To this point, the best storyline may well be the hardwood renaissance of Fort Madison, which is state ranked for the first time since the glory days in 1994 of now Sacramento Kings assistant Ryan Bowen had to work that in somewhere. Well, this incarnation of the Bloodhounds, too, has given rise to a dynamic franchise changing talent in junior guard and potential all stater Miles Wenzine. He is he's bigger, and I think that was the first thing most people have said to me is he's grown and they kind of look at that with a little bit of disappointment, hoping he'd be the same size. But uh, um, yeah, he's, yeah, he's had a nice year so far this year. It's just harder for me to get pushed off the spot. I think it's really easy to like when you get half past them to just continue with your shoulder down and all that stuff. So it does help a lot and jumping ability has gotten a lot better. You know, we sat down and, and with everybody at the end of the year last year and put some goals uh, down on paper. And, uh, you know, one of the, I challenged him to be a better rebounder, be a better leader and both those things he's, he's really working hard to do. Myos when seen is probably the first thing that most people notice about Bloodhound basketball, but in truth, the most impressive thing about this Fort Madison squad is the confident, directed way the entire collective carries itself in all times and in all matters basketball. Honestly, it's uh, their coachability. Everything, everything we've asked them to do, they've, they've been willing to do, and they've, they've really just let the coaching staff coach them, and uh, they've, they've done everything we've asked. It's really easy when you can just drive and then kick out and know that the shot's going to go down and there's no problem of having everybody on you because they can't leave the shooters and all that. And then even if you do miss, we have Wes under the basket to get the rebound, so that makes it a lot easier. We've got a lot of tough kids, and all the time we've put in in the weight room has really helped with that. Uh, we, I don't think anyone on our team has ever quit in a game. Uh, the fourth quarter, everyone really comes through and pushes through all the hard times. We don't have any real selfish players or anybody. Everybody's a free passer. I mean, nobody's going to take stupid shots or anything like that. We swing the ball as fast as we can, try to get it post touches, bring it in, bring it out, you know, try to get uh, the open man the shot. But the kids have bought in. Even when we were 4 and 17, they, they were great practice kids. They would come in and they would work hard and do everything you asked anyway. So I don't think we've changed because of uh, a few wins or, or a little bit of you know, success uh, statewide. So uh, the kids have done a great job that way. It is indeed very nice to see the Hound Dome a rockin' again. Unfortunately, big showdown yesterday scheduled with perennial powerhouse Mount Pleasant got wiped out, but still at this point undefeated. You can't do much better than that. Let's shift gears now. The Hannibal Pirate Wrestling Squad opened this day in third place out of 22 teams and had eight different grapplers alive in the quest for tournament championships this morning at Fort Zumwalt East. This would turn out to be a successful, even more surprisingly so than maybe the Pirates anticipated going into this day. Let us take you down to Zumwalt East today where we'll start off at 113. This is Austin James setting a tone versus Troy's Anthony Wida at this point. Quick takedown as James goes up 2-0. He'd get two back points here to go up 4 nothing and then Wida suffers a cut. It's two very long blood times. I'm going to read this in my Ben Gazzara voice. You're a bleeder. And you know what? Eventually the kid got back up. The icing process, though, would not work on Austin Janes in this one. Austin Janes doing great work right here, getting a couple more back points. In fact, three of them right here to go up 7 nothing to end the first period. Again, long delays. Austin never really lost his focus. This young man, a very mature wrestler and a state championship threat. Absolutely this year. How about more from Austin with the takedown right here to open up the second period? And then just things would go nuts as Austin really found his groove. Got two points there. Eventually he runs the score to 14 to nothing. He's about to tech fall. The young man in question as you see him get some more back points right here. In fact, three of them to run that score out to 14 to nothing. Eventually, though, Austin decides tech falls not good enough. He's going to get the pin. So he's done fooling around. Cradle of death is implied and applied, I should say. Put in and effectively done. Austin James gets the win here today. He also gets the win in the individual championship at 113 as well. Moving up in weight class, tough day for Chandler Foey, the defending state champion here at 120 pounds. He's going to have himself a, a heck of a start, at least here in the quarterfinals. Again, with the takedown right here of Zunwalt South's Patrick Clicks. 
And then just a second takedown momentarily after that. It only took him 49 seconds to pin this kid. Unfortunately, Chandler Foey injured his finger in this match and could not continue on the rest of the day. So Chandler Foey, who was the favorite in this match and perhaps the favorite to title at his weight class, ended up just short, had to bow out on the day. Still, it didn't affect the Pirates' team score, at least not in terms of the championship they would win as a team today. Oops, let that slip early, but it's a good thing. Most impressive takedown of the day comes right here. Tyler James working it quickly right here, setting things up against Nick Schmiedemer right here. Gets the beautiful takedown early. It only took him 39 seconds to do his work right here. Going to get the power half in here eventually and just throw his kid to the mat. And, oh, my goodness, that's just devastating. That's sensational seven-worthy good for him as he would win his weight class as well today. As you will see, I tell you what, those James boys, very impressive. Like to see them with a brother versus brother wrestle off against the Lucys. How much fun would that be? We'll talk about the Lucys in a second. More to come in this one. The biggest story of the day for Hannibal, a breakout weekend for 170 pounder Austin Hawes, who you see here taking down Chase Pruitt of Rockwood Summit. He was down early. The escape right there doing good stuff for Mr. Hawes at that point. Then the biggest blow in this particular match, a reversal and a near fall, all in one filled swoop for Austin Hawes, who takes a 6-2 victory today in the quarterfinals, would go on all the way to be the surprise winner of his weight weight class as well. Good for Austin Haas. Breakout candidate in a weight class the Pirates really needed at 170 pounds. Good day for him. We'll go with one more set of highlights here at 285 pounds. Harrison Vessel doing nice work today as well. He's only 195 pounds technically and probably will wrestle at 195 pounds in the second half of the year, but he was wrestling up at heavyweight today and actually winning his quarterfinal today, as you will see here, taking Josh Stockton apart in this one. Three points for the back points right there and then more right here with the takedown for Mr. Vessel, who ended up with a 50 place finish on the day. The story for the Pirates, they win the 22 team affair and look really good doing so. Also had a couple of other champions who didn't wrestle in the quarterfinals who had buys. Want to pass along our congratulations as well to Kyle Muring who wrestled very well at 220 today. Colby Collings was the number one rated wrestler going in in this one. Uh, unfortunately ended up taking a loss in the championship today so he ends up in second place at 160 pounds, but great showing by the Pirates there. Let's uh, take a look at the Fort Madison. We'll bring you highlights of this in just a second. We'll take a look at the team scores as Fort Madison posted 228 today to win their own invitational over Keokuk, Burlington, West Hancock. Got all kinds of highlights from, of this one coming up for you a little later in the show. Let's take a look at the other big news of the day in Illinois. Quincy Notre Dame taking six today at the loaded Clinton tournament. Your freshman, Ashton Myers at 106 pounds, your only pirate or your only Raider, I should say, to take an individual championship today, but Darren Stevens, Jeffrey Haley, Blake Schutte, all with second place finishes. Good showing by those guys there. Also at the Mascuda tournament today, Quincy High School, third out of, I believe, 22 teams, loaded tournament there. Great showing again at 132 by Michael Peters, who's been phenomenal to start this season. Trevor Schutte with a nice showing for second place at 113. And then Stephen Sharp, Josh Culp, Connor Emmerich, all with third place finishes in their respective weight classes. And if you didn't get a chance to see it, our buddy Dustin Jacoby, the pride of Concord Triopia, former quarterback at both Culver Stockton, Quincy University, ends up making his national television debut tonight on the Spike Network Kickboxing in Glory 13, taking on Mikado Uhara or Uihara, I should say. Dustin Jacoby ends up what looked like a victory. Even the commentators said Dustin Jacoby dominated. He lost a split decision, two judges to one. Felt a little weird because uh, Yuihara is from Japan and wrestling in his hometown and kind of got a weird decision there. So Dustin Jacoby falls to four and three in his career. We have plenty more coming up next, including Seeds of Greatness with the Unity Lady Mo. Tis the season of giving and what better way to highlight our list of December Con Communication Connection voting than a spectacular assist served up by one of the area's most generous point guards. His name, Trevor Many, and what a whirling dervish assist he had last night right here to Jordan Nutt against Unity to take top honors for the league. Look at this. We'll slow it down for you because we have to. Trevor Many, Spinorama, Spin Cycle. Just beautiful stuff right there. It's like Shakira with the moves right there. Great stuff for Trevor Many, your third nominee for the month of December. Your other nominees to refresh your memory just in case you want to vote against Trevor Many or have a favorite among this list. Let's take a look at those leaders right now. They include a wrestling and a basketball highlight last week. Your basketball highlight, courtesy of Lucas Daniel, with a phenomenal tip in for the North Shelby basketball team, and a great wrestling pin last week from Alina West, Dakota Huss. And we'll have more overtime for you coming up after this. Blame it on Jack Frost. We've got our wrestling highlights. We will start you off in Fort Madison with West Hancock's finest, Will Lucy, winning a major decision here today. 12 to 2 in the championship against Wapolo's Jack Walker, who you see here. These back points pivotal in that 12 to 2 major decision at 113 pounds. 
pounds. First the takedown, you saw that earlier, then the back points. Will Lucy still just cruising, wins first place today at 113 pounds. One of two championships today for West Hancock. The other, his big brother Jack Lucy, working an 8-0 decision here, getting major back points right here against Burlington's Dallas Terry for the win at 132. Tell you what, Jack is wrestling like a man possessed these days. Great win for him as a good big day for West Hancock, who finishes fourth on the day as a team led by the Lucy brothers who out. How, how about Kia X Dakota Shaw right here, working at 182 against Ryan Braderson of Muscatine. Braderson, no match for Shaw, who's been a monster of late for the Kia Keck Chiefs, who finished second as a team in this contest today, as uh, Dakota Shaw gets the pinfall victory there and moves on to the championship and gets the championship as well. Kia Keck also got championships today from Brant O'Shea at 106 and Cam Sadagy at 126. The winner team-wise today, the Fort Madison Bloodhounds, who had six individual champions, including Tanner Hawker at 120, Trenton Johnson at 138, Matthew Durr at 145, Nick Audie at 152, and Lane Gray at 160. Well, thanks to what was one of the most veteran nucleuses anywhere in Tri-State basketball last season, the last two years really, the Unity Lady Mustangs won back-to-back -back district championships. That won't be the case this year. Not that they can't win, just if they do it, the buzzword will be precocious. Seeds of Greatness brought to you by Burris Hybrids. We've been starting three freshmen. Uh, one game this year we started four, but uh, even the first two girls off the bench are a sophomore and a freshman, and they've been doing a great job. Um, they've actually been, done a great job all year. They're very coachable girls. Uh, every single thing you tell them, they uh, take to heart and they listen. With just four upperclassmen sprinkled in, their roster reads more like that of a junior varsity squad. But there's very little else here to suggest the relative inexperience of these Unity Lady Mustangs. Not the win-loss column, not their approach on the floor, or for that matter, that this is a team being led in scoring right now by a ninth grader. Yeah, it's, it's kind of awesome. In eighth grade, um, Brad told me he said I'd be on the starting lineup. That didn't really phase me because I played here with the high schoolers in seventh grade. He brought me up on practice. And it was scary in seventh grade, but now I'm used to it. It doesn't really bother me. She's just handled the pressure well. So has uh, Jordan Hildebrand and Claire Raby. You know, we watched them a lot in middle school, just seeing how they were going to be coming up. And they made amazing accomplishments in middle school, too. And, it, and I don't think that varsity teams scare them at all. They've been playing like all-stars. And speaking bluntly, it certainly helped that this brigade of young lady Mustangs has been welcomed with open arms by a group of veterans unselfish enough and mature enough to take advantage of this talent windfall. Now Maggie's done a great job. Uh, first day of summer this year, she told me she remembers being a freshman and what it was like, and she was not going to let those freshmen go through some of the same struggles she did. So she's been a great team leader for them and an inspiration. I don't think that they care what everyone else thinks. They just go out there and do the best they can, and they always bring it. Like me and Maggie are both kind of like each other, you know, we're both really long and quick and Whitney and Jordan are really good together on the floor, got really strong post players. I like the way it's been going so far. I've told these girls they honestly fit together like a, a, a puzzle and we're still right now trying to figure out how to put all those pieces together, but they do complement each other very well. Indeed they do. I'm all out of time on break for a couple of days. Merry Christmas, everybody, and we'll see you back here just in time for holiday tournament time.